Assalamu alaikum guys. Yes, it's another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. Now of course because of the pandemic, a lot of people are feeling the pinch. More so are those parents who rely on free school meals to feed their kids. Yeah, now the government continued it during the Easter holidays but then decided to stop it over the summer holidays which can go up to I think uh, over a month and a half. So Manchester United's very own Marcus Rashford took it upon himself to petition to the government to continue feeding our kids during the summer holidays. Now Alhamdulillah the public as well as other famous figures also jumped on and supported this cause to such a degree that the government did a U-turn on its decision and is now continuing to feed the kids during the six week period. Now, I don't know about you but it's a bit worrying that a footballer seems to have more concern for our kids than the people that are supposed to be leading us. When you look at it though he's a 22 year old young footballer um, he shouldn't really be the one having to do this. Now how is it that somebody with a fraction of the privilege and the education is giving our leaders a lesson in empathy? And isn't it worrying that we need celebrities and those of influence amongst us to petition the government to continue feeding our kids during this period? It seems strange that we have to be in a position where we're desperately arguing um, to try and get young people fed. Uh, talk to uh, Daniel Rashford. Yes, that's right. Our leader, our health secretary, Hancock. You're watching. Guy. You're, you're somebody you're that must dying. be watching your pornography. Hey, please allow me. Allow me, please. Yeah? yeah. He only had to memorize one name. Yeah. That the nation was talking about for the last week for live television, and he couldn't even get that right. Dan. 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 And they've come up with uh, the AIDS vaccine. They've come up with, or the AIDS, and the, as you know, there's various. And yes, you heard correct. Donald Trump, Mr. Donald Trump, after claiming he's walked his dog, finished his broccoli, he claimed that he found the cure to AIDS. From Su Chin Tendulkar. We've developed some sort of resistance, yeah, to Donald Trump. We kind of expect that from him. But shouldn't we be worried that we've got this sort of impermeability to the speech of the leader of the free world, yeah? Can literally tell us today, yep, I was just on the moon doing a number two and then I came, had lunch with Voldemort. Come, we've saved you a seat. And play tennis with my sister, Bane. What is this? I mean, it seemed like the government qualified to play against the people in the final. The people showed the right discipline, applied the right pressure and in the dying moments of the game the people crossed it into Rashford who headed it into the top right hand corner of the net with a bell tunnel. He not only won the cup, he won the plates, the spoons and the lot mate yeah. Whilst Hancock got, <laughs> whilst Hancock got sent off with a red card for thinking it was a game of golf. Talk to uh, Daniel Rashford. And Boris was on the phone to his mate Donald Trump. A very good friend of mine, Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Trying to convince him that he hadn't necessarily found the cure to AIDS. And they've come up with uh, the AIDS vaccine. It was brilliant that Marcus stood up for this cause and Raheem Sterling also was standing up for his cause and people are appreciating footballers taking a stand. What was a bit worrying was about six months ago another footballer took a stand, Mesut Ozil. He took a stand for the Uyghurs in China. For those of you that don't know there are two million Muslims that have been held in some people call them concentration camps, some people call them internment camps. Regardless their human rights are being violated there. He stood up, Arsenal turned his back against him, China started applying all sorts of sanctions. They took him out of Pro Evolution Soccer, which is like a fake version of uh, FIFA. For those of you that haven't heard of that game, it's crap, yeah. And to be honest, yeah, I used to play it, but now no way, Jose. 
And if that's not all, during the match commentaries whenever Arsenal is playing, they don't even mention Ozil's name. They don't sound like the next rising superpower, rather they sound more like somebody that's getting over a breakup. You know what families are going through now, I once had to go through that um, same system. You don't know the extent to how it's affecting, affecting people if you've not been through it. Um... Now what's brilliant is a footballer that has been through this sort of stuff himself because Marcus actually grew up um, on free school dinners and used to benefit from food banks. So he understands the the pain and you know the peril of the people during this time. Boris on the other hand and most of these leaders, let's face it, they've studied in Eton, they've grown up in privilege, they don't understand what the common man is going through. They need more convincing trying to feed their own kids but they need less convincing bailing out bankers. Can you think of anybody who stuck up for the bankers as much as I did? I, I, I defended them uh, day in, day out. Where are their priorities? And they've come up with uh, the AIDS vaccine. And why is he not picking up the phone and calling up Trump and saying, what on earth are you banging on about, mate?